Hi there, I'm Graham Lewis and in this video we're going to look at confidence intervals for proportions and we're going to do a worked example and compare a 95%, 90% and 99% and discuss the advantages. Don't forget to pause the video and try the questions yourself and then I will go through them and it's fine remember to make mistakes, mistakes are an important part of learning but do remember to try it yourself, it's the only way to learn mathematics. Okay, so let's get started here. So in my previous video which was called what is a confidence interval, uh, we went through that for a 90% confidence interval we need a Z score value, the critical value of 1.64 and for a 95% one 1.96 and for a 99% one 2.58. So I'm not going to redo that. If you need to watch that video again, please do so. Um, I'd recommend it. Um, and so what we haven't done is shown the margin of error. So in that example, if you remember, we had a percentage of people that were happy after changing careers, and that was 87%, with a margin of error of 3.1%, giving us a confidence interval of 87% plus or minus the 3.1%. So this 3.1% here is called the margin of error. You can see that there. So we've got our estimate of the percentage of people that are happy after changing their jobs, plus or minus 3.1 percentage points, giving us a confidence interval, this was a 95% confidence interval, from 83.9% to 90.1%. So in this video, we're going to use the margin of error formula here, um, to actually work out 90%, 95%, and 99%. Confidence intervals. So in this formula, we've got Z star, which is our critical value. You're going to choose either 1.64, 1.96, or 2.58, depending what level of confidence. And you're probably not sure what level to pick yet. After this video, hopefully, you'll have a little bit more idea. So now, P hat is our estimate from our sample. So it's our sample proportion. So in the percentage of people that were happy, it was 87%. That was what our sample told us. And 1 minus p hat is the people that weren't happy. So 100% minus the 87%. So that's obviously 13%. And n is your sample size. So let's do an example, a new example. So in 2009, they caught a sample of fish in Lake Lavier, which is one of the largest lakes still is in Algonquin Park. And 234 out of 911 fish that they caught were trout. So that gives us a sample proportion. So that gives us our p hat is 234 out of 911, which gives us uh, to three decimal places um, 0.257. So 25.7% is our estimate for the percentage of fish in that lake that are actually trout. So now we can find a 95% confidence interval for that. So first we need to work out a margin of error, the plus or minus thing. So basically because we're doing a 95% level, the critical value Z star is going to be 1.96 times the square root. My p hat, my estimate is 0.257. That's the proportion of fish in my sample. Always remember to put that as a decimal number, not a percentage. At the end, I like percentages, but in this calculation, it needs to go in probably as a decimal is easier for you. And then the percentage that aren't, the proportion that are not trout is 1 minus 257, and then divide by a nice large sample of 911. So let's calculate that now. And we get a value of 0 0.028. And obviously that's equal to 2.8%. Now that's a, a quite a small margin of error. That's because we have a nice, nice large sample here of 911. The larger the sample, the better we can get our margin of error smaller. So now all we have to do is finish off by working out our confidence interval and writing it correctly. So to work out our confidence interval, all we have to do is take our p hat, which is 0.257, the sample estimate of the percentage trout in the lake, plus or minus our margin of error, which we've just worked out, 0 0.028. And so we take 0.257 and add 0 0.028 to get our upper bound. So the add gives me the upper bound and minus gives me the lower bound. And I prefer it as percentages at the end. So 22.9% to 28.5%. So now what we can do is just write it in context. So this is your standard sentence that you're always going to use. 
I am uh, percent confident that the true uh, of uh, is between uh, and uh. And you just fill in the, the grotty bits there. And let's do that as if by magic. And there we have it, our confidence interval. I am 95% confident that the true proportion of trout in Lake Lavier in 2009 is between 22.9% and 28.5%. Now, let's put it over to you. It's now your turn, and you have to now find a 99% confidence interval. Don't forget to use the different critical value, 2.58. And a question for you. What do you think will change? So here was the 95% between 22.9% and 28.5%. When I go to a 99% level, do you think that interval will be wider, the same, or narrower? Have a think, and then try it out, and then we'll discuss. And there we have it. Hopefully you got the same margin of error, 3.7%. Let's just go through it. So the only thing that's actually changing is the Z star level. So as we gain confidence, this Z star gets bigger. So because nothing else changes in the formula, the margin of error is actually larger than before. Because remember for the 95% confidence interval, we had a margin of error of 0 0.028. And here we've got 0.037. So 3.7% is a bigger margin of error than 2.8%. But we're more confident. So what do you want to be? More confident with a wider interval or less confident with a narrower interval? And that depends on the situation and we'll decide at the end which one we like the most. Now let's work out our confidence interval. So remember to work out our confidence interval, we take our estimate p hat, which is 0.257, plus or minus our new margin of error, which is 0 0.037. So taking the 2.57 and adding 0 0.037 gives me an upper bound of 29.4%, prefer it in percentage, and then obviously subtracting gives me the 22%. So I'm 99% confident, sorry, that should be a 9. I'm 99% confident, so I have more confidence that the true proportion of trout in Lake Lavier is between 22% and 29.4%, which is a wider interval. Okay. Have a think, which interval do you prefer? Which information? The 95% one or the 99% one? Do you like more confidence and a wider interval in this example? Or less confidence and a narrower interval? And you've guessed it. It's your turn now to do the 90% confidence interval. So for the 90% confidence interval, take the Z star value as 1.64. Pause the video. Off you go. So let's see if we got the same answer here. So again, uh, this is almost identical. It's only the uh, Z score here that's changing my critical value. It's 1.64 for a 90% level. And then everything else in the calculation is the same. So hopefully you got um, a, com a margin of error of 2.4%, 0 0.024. And then the confidence interval is my estimate, p hat plus or minus this margin of error. So my estimate was 0.257 plus or minus this 0 0.024. And adding subtracting gives me a confidence interval of 23.3% to 28.1%. So I, I am 90% confident that the true proportion of trout in Lake Lavier in 2009 is between 23.3% and 28.1%. Notice that this has the smallest margin of error of all of our three examples, but the least confident. So um, let's have a look at the three together and then you can choose which one you prefer. So here you have it. If we want 90% confidence, which me means, remember, that only 90% of the confidence intervals will capture the true proportion, um, which is quite a lot of error. 10% of the time, your confidence interval may not capture the true proportion. Um, the margin of error is 2.4%. So we've got the smallest margin of error. 95% confident, which is 19 times out of 20. Your confidence interval may capture the true proportion. Your margin of error is 2.8%. And 99% of the time, so very, very high confidence with a slightly higher margin of error. So normally, statisticians like the 95% one. It's kind of like the Goldilocks in the middle, that it, it kind of um, has good confidence, good enough confidence, and keep that margin of error down. But in this case, I think I prefer the 99% level because being so confident for not much more margin of error, there's only a 0.9% increase in margin of error. Now, the reason for that was our sample size was so large. You won't often have 
such a large sample of 911, which is wonderful. So I hope you enjoyed this video and it explained confidence intervals and the mechanics I think are a lot easier than the theory underpinning it. So you'll enjoy doing this and understand it when you read it in news and media. Have a great day, everyone.